morning. How are you on this Tuesday morning? It is the 25th of August. Hey, we're nearly at the end of the summertime in 2020. Yay! <laughs> I'm ready for 2020 to be in the rearview mirror and some new things ahead. How about you? Let's talk about growing up today. A toddler who appeared quite healthy to me, uh, showing no apparent signs of pain, was following a woman I assumed was his mom into the store. And he was whining, carry me, carry me, in the most pathetic voice. She paused to assure him that he was quite capable of walking himself, and on they went. When that little moment of human drama played out in front of me, I smiled to myself and chalked it up as a lesson in humanity. Let's reflect on that this morning. The Bible urges Christians to show compassionate care for one another. It's baseline, right? Jesus says our love for the brethren is a distinctive mark of our authentic faith. James reminds us that real religion, the kind that passes muster before God, the Father is this, reach out to the homeless and the loveless in their plight, James 1.27. John says if our love is just words, it's worthless. Really show it by your actions, he says in 1 John chapter 3. But given what we know about human nature, what happens when that kind of concern is paramount in our community? You guessed it. Among those of genuine need, there are people who just want to be carried, who show up and demand, take care of me, carry me. They're quite capable, but they choose to exploit the compassion of the church. Our sense as Christians that we always need to be affirming and loving makes corrective action in those situations a very difficult thing to do, doesn't it? We, how do we find a way to point those who are just simply looking to avoid dealing with life to mature self-sufficiency without seeming to be uncaring? It's not an easy question to answer. How do we help them best by leading them to become engaged with the daily work that's required to produce their resources? Then, too, Obviously, or at least I would hope obviously, we are reluctant to appear to be judging those who ask for help without fully understanding their needs. <clears throat> and because Christian community is often so shallow, we don't really have the capability a lot of the time to have the honest conversation that might reveal the larger need. It's not just groceries and rent money that I'm talking about this morning. In fact, that's the smaller issue. Here it is, and I don't want to sound like a crank, but I think this is an important point. The church has many members who have never found the joy of serving, of being part of God's work in the world. Oh yeah, they want good sermons, they want to be inspired, they want pastoral care, they want fully developed children's and youth ministries, they want comfortable houses of worship, but they don't contribute, they don't work, they don't give, their time is reserved for themselves. Their way of life, if not their words, say, carry me, carry me. <laughs> Out of a lifetime of pastoral work, and I've done this for four decades, I can make this corollary, obs corollary observation. Those who contribute the least are often the worst critics of those who are doing the most. Theirs is a kind of perpetual spiritual infancy that is not norm for Christian living. In the church in the city of Corinth, there were many who liked showy worship services and love feasts, but they wouldn't get involved in serving. Paul referred to them as infants who are incapable of receiving the meat of the word, even though they should have matured in faith long ago. Here's another truth. Those Christians who are most deeply satisfied with their faith and who are most likely to be steady in church fellowship are those who have found a place to serve, one that maximizes the gift of the Spirit that is given to them. Oh, it doesn't mean that they don't get tired. Of course they do. It doesn't mean they find success in everything they attempt in the name of Christ. Who does? It doesn't mean they're often or always rather rewarded with appreciation. <laughs> of course, nobody receives appreciation for service all the time. And yet, these faithful, maturing, Christ-centered people show up, 
care for themselves, care for their church, learn the scripture, pray, deal with life's disappointments, and build a life that honors Christ in the ordinary. Their life is an illustration of Jesus' words from the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, 5, where he says, You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves the proud owners of everything you cannot buy. You want to honor Christ? You want to grow in grace? You want to find lasting joy in the Lord? Here are words from the Word that are a place to start. These are the words of Paul addressed to the Christians in Thessalonica in both his first and second letters to that church, a church that apparently had some problems with some Christians who really didn't want to get engaged in the work of God. Listen to Paul's words. Make them a word from the word to your heart today. He says, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, to work with your own hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life will win the respect of outsiders and you will not be dependent on anybody. And then he also goes on to say, we hear some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ, settle down, earn the bread you eat. There are lives to save, friend. There is a world to serve, a God to glorify. Let's do it together. Not demanding, carry me, carry me. I want to use the words of Charles Wesley as a prayer this morning. It's an old, old hymn. You may not even know it. I don't hear it sung hardly ever in a church these days. It's called, A Charge to Keep I Have. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. A never-dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. O may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Here's the prayer. Arm me with jealous care as in thy sight to live. And O thy servant, Lord, prepare a strict account to give. Help me to watch and pray and on thyself rely. Assured that if my trust betray, I shall forever die. God bless you today. Thank you for joining me for another coffee break. It's a privilege to serve with you. I'm sure this one wasn't just exactly as encouraging as they generally are, but I pray that God will bless the word to your heart. Now, Father, watch over us, guide us, and guard us. May we live in a way that keeps the charge you have given to each one of us so that we might know the joy of faithful service and your rich reward. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. 